This episode is brought to you by America's Rehab Campus. Get on the road to recovery with the best rehab in beautiful Arizona. Dial 1-833-272-7342. That's 1-833-ARC-REHAB. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to The 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 Archers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Arcast. My name is Buddha. I'm Vance Johnson, former NFL ball player, now playing on Team Arc. Yes, sir, absolutely. And today we have a very special guest. What is your name, sir? My name is Daniel Mendoza. Daniel Mendoza. Let's give him a very, very warm round of applause. All right. Yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. Good seeing you, Daniel. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, man, we appreciate you coming through, especially on such a quick notice, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we heard your testimony, Vance, and I had the opportunity to hear you speak yeah. a little bit ago. Uh, where, where was this, Vance? Where did we go? That's a good question because we go everywhere. So <laughs> I remember him though. Yeah, well, this is at the, I think it was at the, the drug court thing. Where Do you remember? We, yeah, at the you, adult probation office. The yep. adult probation yeah. office. Exactly. Yeah, and, and Vance was speaking there yeah. and you were one of the co- the speakers there too, yeah. man. We heard your testimony. He's like, yo, we got to get him in here. Oh man, I was so excited to hear your, your testimony, man. Thank you so much for being here, brother. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Yeah, man, for sure. So, man, I've I've got an opportunity to, to meet you a little bit, you know, and, yeah. and it's weird how things cross paths and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to know a little bit about your testimony, you know, where you came from, man. I mean, um, we're all about health and wellness here, helping people get off of drugs and alcohol. And your your story was incredible, man. Yeah. So introduce, let the world know who you are, brother. Introduce yourself. In fact, real quick, brother, it was so exciting to listen to your testimony, man. I was just in tears of joy and thinking that young man actually is going to save so many souls because he is so transparent with the things that he shares. So Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Oh, I had to leave some things out. You know, I didn't have that much time um, right. at the adult probation office. Um, but I was born and raised in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. Um, my birthday is coming up next month. I'll be 42. And that's by the grace of God. So growing up in Tucson, I lived on the south side. And um, I remember trying alcohol when I was two years old. Mm. Wow. Uh, my Nina, she used to be like, hey, uh, go get some alcohol for me from the refrigerator. So I'll go over there and get it. And then she gave me a drink and my mom caught her and my mom flipped out. Wow. Um, oh, man. Then when I was six, I was molested. Um, then I was molested again when I was 12. At 11, I saw my best friend get ran over by a car. Oh, you know, man. And he died right there. And then when I was 16, I found my dad dead. You know, I came mm. home one day from playing basketball, and he was dead on the floor. Wow. Um, my freshman year in high school, I started experimenting with drugs. You know, I've yeah. tried everything. started experimenting with um, LSD. You know what I mean? I started doing cocaine, crack cocaine. I tried crystal meth. Started smoking marijuana on a regular basis. You know, see moms and dads and those that are listening right now, how transparent he is and how many of us have gone through the very things that we're listening to him going through and how mental illness is a real big deal. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then after my father passed away, I didn't know how to cope with it. I didn't know how to deal with it. Well, let let me rewind a little bit. I did grow up in in a Bible-believing church. Yeah. You know, when I was 11, I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I received the gift of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues at 11 years old. But I never really knew what it was like to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And, and I say that because Jesus is the hero of my story. You know, because if it wasn't for Jesus in my life, I wouldn't be standing, sitting here today talking to Vance and to you, Buddha. Amen. Uh, you Amen. Know? So, um, so I started experimenting drugs after my father passed away. You know, I started using drugs pretty heavily. So my mom said she would have to move off of 29th Street because we were living on 29th back in 97. Yeah. And she's like, we got to move off of 29th Street. So we moved back to the south side. And um, my addiction just progressed. You know, I started doing more coke, started selling cocaine. You know, and my mom wasn't having it. My mom was like, if you're going to live in my house past 18, you have to go to church. Yeah. If you yeah. miss a Sunday, she. When you're sleeping, she was going to go and take your house key. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's the way That's the way my mom was. And yeah. um, so she told me to leave, you know, when I was 19 because I was selling drugs. So I started running the streets, you know. And, and I was in the streets for about three years, you know what I mean, just using drugs. Wow. You know, I, I was – and I want to be transparent like Van said because it, it, it's not about where I was. It's about where I am now in Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. You know, um, so I, I was in the streets panhandling for a long time. You know what wow. I mean? Trying to trying to find drugs, trying to find drugs, and and that's just the way I lived my life for like three years. You know what I mean? The streets. My mom didn't know where I was at. She'd call the police and put a tent to locate on me, and they would come looking for me. They'd find me and then make me call my mom, and and that was just about it. Man, yeah. And it, so real quick, man, just a quick question. So with all the trauma and things that you experienced as a kid, was there any? Did you have any type of like a therapy? Or was there anyone that you were able to talk to during that time, or did a lot of that? Put, you had to put it away. 
I, I, that's why I was using drugs heavily like I was. Right. Was to yeah. put it away. And that's why I was talking about the mental illness. And like you yeah. said, the trauma. Mm-hmm. And when you go through trauma as a child, you try to figure out how you can get away from it. And that's leaning on those addictions. Yeah. 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 Wow. And, and that's what it was for me. I really didn't have anybody to talk to. You know, I, I didn't have anybody. You know, um, growing up, I was my father's son. Everywhere he went, I went. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the way it was. And after I lost, lost him, it was like I lost a part of me. Yeah. You wow. know, and so I finally got arrested when I was like 22 22 or 23, you know, and they put me in the county jail for three months and then they let me go back to my mom's house because I was on probation. And then after that, I messed up on probation. They put me, took me back to jail and then they let me go to my nana's house. And then after that, I got with my the mother and my daughter. You know, I started selling drugs. I started using drugs. I was still using drugs, you know what I mean? But I started selling drugs a lot, yeah. you know, and it's slowly, I went from not using them to selling them. And because of everything that, that I had learned in the streets before that, I was very good at selling drugs, you know. Yeah. And, and I started selling a lot of drugs. And, and the devil just, uh, he really used everything that I went through for his glory, for right. his good. You know what I mean? And I, I can remember for so many years, I was just destroying people's lives. Yeah. I would just see people's lives deteriorate, you know. At the same time, I was just, and I would drive around town. I remember there was a couple occasions where I'll be driving around town and I would just start crying. Yeah. You know, and, and the mother of my daughter would look at me and she's like, what's going on? I was I, just, I was hurting inside, yeah. you know, the conviction because I knew who Christ was. Mm. You know, I, I knew that he loved me and, and I knew what I was doing was wrong. I knew it. Yeah. And, and finally in, in uh, 2007, I'm be transparent, my stepson got a hold of some cocaine. And when he got a hold of that cocaine, um, he ingested it. And uh, the mother of my daughter took him to... The hospital, he tested positive for cocaine. The police came the next day and they searched the house. They didn't find no drugs. So I had an open CPS case. They took the kids. And um, so I was going through that. I was going through that. At the same time, I was addicted to pain medication because in 2004, I got hurt working and they started giving me pills, yeah. you know. And so I was addicted to pain medication at that time. Yeah. I think that's how I stopped smoking um, crack cocaine was through the pain medication, you, you know, know. Yeah, and a lot of people right now listening to you are, are just wondering, how did he get through this? Because I know he's a believer, but how did he do it? Well, guys, Scripture says that what the enemy means for evil, yes, God's yes. going to use for good. Yes, yes. And so that's the reason why what you're saying right now is so yeah. biblical because what we go through yeah. is just a test. Yeah. And when we lean on our flesh and obviously we're living in our sins, God still loved us. Yeah, yeah. So that's the reason why I just love your testimony, man, and where you're heading with this. Yeah. Because so many people are going to be able to relate with your story so they can see that there's a way out. Yeah, yeah. And and there is a way out. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Except through him, you know what I mean? So um, sometimes people will say, well, that Jesus thing is not for me. And And I'll tell them. Well, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to her who believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. That right there says that it's for everybody who is in this world. Right, And that's why we don't judge people in the road that they are in their yeah. recovery. Yeah. And we love them, but yeah. we just want to also save their souls. Yeah. So I appreciate that, man, because what he's saying, guys, is he loves you no matter what road you're taking to yeah. try to get clean. Yeah. But he wants to show you the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He is the way. So um, I, I was addicted to pain medication. Um, Me too. It, it, it was yeah, it, and that's that's a whole other animal right there. Yep. And it was it was crazy too back then because of the, of the type of money I was making back then. I was even able to manipulate the CPS workers, like the the lady I used to go drop for. Wow. You know, I would yeah. walk in, she would have a clean bottle of pee right there. You know, and I'd walk in, transfer the pee into the cup, and then leave fifty dollar bill on the toilet, and then walk out. You just reminded me of my NFL career when I would have to show up early sometimes before the game, yeah. and I would have one of my teammates come in the bathroom and pee in the cup yeah. for me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. And, and that's the way that's the way it was, it was for me, you know. And then finally, they brought they charged me with, with what happened to my stepson, and then I got caught for another case for a sale, for a possession case. Mm. So I, I went to prison in two thousand nine. Um, I lost my rights to my daughter. I went to prison in 2009, and things didn't change. Right. I got out of prison, violated my parole, went back, got out of prison, clean, started selling drugs again. Yeah. You know, I messed up. 2012, I got put on pro- probation again. It was IPS. I remember getting sentenced in 2012. I had Judge Browning, and I was up all night. I was partied all night long, wow. went into sentencing, and the judge gave me a year IPS. Mm. I didn't last a couple months. You know, I went on the run, yep. wow. went back to jail, you know, went back to prison. And I remember I was in um, Winslow 
And I remember one day, one night, I was playing cards on the table in the day room, and I came back to my dorm, and I passed my neighbor's house, and he had just hit for uh, the head of my people. Mm. And uh, so he had a bunch of heroin, and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm mixing some heroin. And I was like, what does it make you feel like? He's like, well, it makes you feel like you took 10 perks. Uh, I was over with at that point. Yeah. I was I was all in. So that's where I started doing heroin for the first time was in prison. Right. Okay. You know, um, I didn't have to do it in the streets. It was it was easily accessible in prison. And I've heard about that. Yeah. To this day. Yeah. Wow. Yes. It, it was everywhere. It was crazy. It was everywhere. Yeah. You'd find it on the floor. You know. Wow. Yeah. You'd find it on the floor. So I got out of prison, and, and I went home, and I found some drugs at my mom's house in one of my suits. I started selling drugs again. Yeah. Violated parole. Went back to prison. You know, got out in 2015 and caught another case. It was a sales case, Hmm. you know. And I told myself, I said, I wasn't going to go back to prison again and be a drug addict. I wanted to do something different, you know. So I went back to prison, and I didn't use drugs the whole time I was there. You know, I got out in 2017 in August, and um, I was was sober the whole time I was in there. While I got out, got me a job. I got me another vehicle. My mom was letting me stay at her house, you know. And so I was working with some coworkers. I ended up using crystal meth. Started selling drugs again. Yeah, you know, I was right back to it. I couldn't break that cycle. It was it was, it was like being in that revolving door. Yeah, you know, and, and every time the door swung open to open, so you could see that opening, and, and you get that little glimpse of hope, and it just closes right on you. And that's yeah. how it felt for me. Man. Yeah, you know, it that's was, why I really appreciate what you're sharing right now because it shows how God's grace is yeah. for everybody and anybody. Yeah. And your story, the things that you endured all the way from your childhood all the way now, like you said, to 2017, yeah. you kept falling, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I kept and even, falling. And what did, what did Jesus tell the apostle Peter? Yeah. He said, you know what? The devil is asked to sift you yeah. but when you get back. And so you know what I call that? I call that we keep relapsing and falling off sometimes. Yeah. But when we get back, what are we called to do? Well, Strengthen your brothers. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what you're doing with your testimony right Amen. now. Amen. And the Bible also says, uh, uh, I'm not saying that at that time I was living righteous, you know what I mean? But the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Right. You know, wow. and, and I, always, I always think about the Rocky movies. You know, every time I, I hear that verse or say that verse, I always think about Rocky Balboa because mm. it didn't matter how many times he got knocked back down, knocked down, he kept getting back, back up. up. Yep. He kept getting back up. And his resilience and, and his will to continue to get back up and continue to fight, he was being able to overcome and be right. victor, you yeah. know? And it doesn't mean that, you know, it's because some people end up committing suicide. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. that, like yeah. me, you probably had those thoughts too, yeah. all the way from your childhood. Yeah. But I just give God praise, man, yeah. because the grace that he had on you, he was allowing you just yeah. to endure and go through all the things you went through, just like the Apostle Paul yeah. did, because he was doing what? Yeah. You know, he was doing a lot of negative no, stuff no, too, yeah. especially killing Christians. Yeah, killing even. Christians. So, yes. You know what I mean? And God struck him down. Yep. Man. But not only did he strike him down, he picked them back up. That's right. You know, God broke them down just so he could build them up. Exactly, you man. Know? The very thing. So, Absolutely. And um, you know what's beautiful is the fact that where two or more gather, God is there. Amen. So yes. just to have you guys here and just to know the what Spirit of God is in the midst. And, and knowing that this could reach people and yeah. knowing that this could help people, I'm, just, yes. I'm so grateful. Believers and non-believers because yeah. this is what we're all about, just loving everybody no matter where they are. We want to meet them right exactly yeah. where they are. Yeah. yeah, That's right. That's why, you know what? I would love for you to maybe sometimes share your testimony inside prisons and jails. Oh, I love it. And the reason why is... I want you to ask those folks, who would you rather be in the New Testament knowing that they're going to go to heaven? And guess what I would say? The man on the cross. Yeah. He was basically paying all the price that he had to go to prison yeah. for. Yeah. Now he had to die for his sins. But Jesus even said, today I tell you, you'll be with yeah. me in heaven yeah. in paradise. Yeah, because paradise. what he was doing in his yeah. heart was telling the Lord, don't forget me, please. Yeah. So he was repenting for yeah. the things that he had done. Yeah. So yeah. this and, is and, awesome, man. And, and right now I'm reading it. I'm in Samuel, the book of Samuel. Yes. You know, um, on, I was in Samuel last night. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's <laughs> powerful because when Saul disobeyed God yeah. because he sacrificed, he didn't wait for Samuel to come. God told Samuel, look, and I'm going to crown someone else king, a man after my own heart. Right. And he told him to go to the house of Jesse. Right. Now, Jesse's oldest son. There were seven brothers. Yeah, seven brothers. And Jesse's oldest son was tall. You know, above everybody else, handsome looking, God was like, nope, that's not him. Don't judge the exterior. And what he kept doing was all the way from the best, tallest, yeah. best looking son, all he kept way. going yeah. down, down, down. Yeah. And the one that was being chosen wasn't even in the house. It wasn't even in the house. He was in the sheep. Yeah. He was, he was um, tending the sheep. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. Yeah. So, so he sent them out there. Yeah. God told God told Samuel, don't don't look at the exterior. I'm looking at the heart. Yep. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's what's important. And that's what that the thief did on the cross. Yes. You know what I mean? God, the he heart. He repented from his heart. You know what I mean? And that's why he was in paradise with Christ. 
Christ, you know. So, wow. yeah, was, it's, it's amazing. That book, hey, we're going to church today, man. Yeah, that book that you were talking about, I was in just last night, yeah. you know, just in, just listening to the very scripture that you were just yeah. now sharing, well, brother. So this, and you said earlier, you said, you know what? We're two or three gather. I'm there with them. So yeah, guess absolutely. what? The Spirit is talking through all of us today. Yeah. I was feeling it today. I told Vance before we came. I saw I him. I told you. Yeah, well, it, well, as soon as we, I saw him, I normally see him when I come in, right? And I saw him first thing in the morning. We always seem to be running into each other. I said, today's going to be a good day, man. Amen. I can just feel the Holy Spirit Amen. today. So, And I said, you know what? I saw that in your in you before you came out of your mouth, yeah. didn't I? Yeah, that's right. right. Man. man, this is awesome. We're, we're so excited and so looking forward to just listening to your testimony, man, and just sitting here just listening to you, man. I'm just in tears of joy. Amen, amen. Uh, so in 2017, I got back out of prison and started using drugs again, started selling drugs. And uh, I never reported, never checked in. And they ended up violating me again. I got arrested. I went back to prison for a month. Mm. And I got out. In 2018, I got out. And uh, this is before even COVID hit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my COVID. goodness. How'd you make it through yeah. that? Okay, we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was in June. I think I got back out. I went back for a month. And, and when I got arrested, I knew I was going to get arrested. You know, I knew it. So I, I had my ex-girlfriend. She was, me and her have been together off and on since 2010. You know, she, she was... Uh, we were real codependent on each other, you know what I mean? And we were so deep into our addiction together, you know. Um, so I gave her all my drugs, you know what I mean? I said, hold it, I'll be back in a month, you know. And sure enough, I got out in a month, you know what I mean? I got out. Mom went and picked me up. I went back to her home. She's like, you can't stay here. And I said, it's okay, Mom. I got money saved up, you know. I got my, my vehicle and got my stuff and went and got a hotel room and went right back to selling dope. You know, four days later, I got into an apartment, and that's just the way I was living. Yeah. You know, August came by, I was just selling drugs. It's you know, quick, quick, quick. yeah, just quick. You know, and it's just you know, selling drugs, and uh, September came, selling drugs. And then October 30th, 2018, I got rear-ended, mm. and uh, I had a two millimeter bulge poking into my lower left sciatic nerve, and I couldn't walk. You know, I was I was getting shooting pains down my leg. You know, at this time, I was selling heroin, selling crystal meth, selling crack cocaine, but I was using um, the heroin and the crystal meth. You know, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd smoke me some heroin, then I'd smoke me some crystal meth. Mm. You know, I had it right next to my nightstand. That's what I would do every morning when I woke up, then I'll go sell drugs. And, and so when I got rear-ended, I got rear-ended, I couldn't walk, you know. And and I remember telling my ex-girlfriend Thanksgiving because she had stayed up for a couple of days. So Thanksgiving, she was asleep all day long. You know, I waited all day for her to wake up so we can go eat food with the family and everything. She slept. She woke up the next day and I said, I'm tired of living like this. Mm. I said, I'm going to go back to church. Did you? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, wow. She, she just looked at me like laugh, like she didn't believe me, you know. And so, so, December- so it was like the pain, the pain from everything that you experienced is what made you want to get back into your faith? I, I just I, I just think I was tired. Yeah. I was tired. I, I, I knew that there was something different, even though I'd, at that moment I didn't know how to obtain it. Uh-huh. I knew it was possible. But your heart was repenting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. And so December came, and um, I was supposed to be going to physical therapy, but I was like, I didn't need to because I was getting high, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I, they had me on crutches. I couldn't walk. So all December I was just selling drugs, just just continuing to run the streets, selling drugs, you know, in crutches. And, and so Christmas Eve, my ex fell out again. She was asleep for like a couple of days. Wow. And so I waited all day Christmas Day, you know what I mean? And she didn't wake up. So that when she woke up, finally, I said, you know what? I told you I'm tired of living like this. Wow. I'm going to go back to church. Yes. And she just looked at me and she didn't, I don't think she believed me, you know. So January 3rd, 2019, I woke up that morning and I told her, I said, I don't want to do heroin no more. You know, and she didn't look, she looked at me like, what? You can do heroin no more. And I had some suboxone strips, you know, I was going to start taking those and start to taper off of yeah. it, you know. And so I woke up that day, started selling drugs, didn't do no heroin, didn't do no suboxone all day long. Oh, so it was around 1030 at night. I went to go sell someone some drugs and there was an undercover cop down, the, well, undercover police officer down the street mm. and he was watching. So he saw me do the deal. Then he followed me and they pulled me over. I was getting onto the freeway right there off of Campbell. Uh-huh. They pulled me over. Um, they didn't find no drugs on me then, but they saw her throw the heroin out the window. So they took us both to jail. And I've already been to prison three times, you know what I mean, for drugs. Yeah. One sales case, you know. And so I go to, to the county jail and they find the crack cocaine, you know what I mean? I stuffed it in my shorts, so they found it in there. And um, they put me in a holding cell by myself. And I've already kicked pills in the county probably like six or seven times so i know what it's like i know what it's gonna take i know what my body's about to go through not only that i was like i'm done they just caught me with some more dope you mm-hmm. know what I mean? they just found 15 suboxone strips in the truck i'm done i'm going back to prison for sure wow. you know I, I knew it i just felt it inside you know so i'm on the on the concrete floor 
going through the Malia sick. Uh, and they call me to yeah, they call me for a uh, court the next morning. So when when you were when you got locked up, you hadn't even taken like a sub to try and no, help I didn't take it? anything. Wow. I didn't take anything. You know, I was like I was so I was already starting to get sick. The next morning they woke me up to go to court, and I was like one of the last ones because my ex girlfriend and me they had to keep separate on us, man, because it was the same case. Uh-huh. So I go into the courtroom and I'm sitting there, and drug court speaks up, and the judge says we're gonna release you to um, pretrial services, not drug courts, pretrial services. They speak up and they release me to pretrial services and I couldn't believe it I was like with my record I got another sales case I'm not another sales case but another drug case they hit me with uh, promoting prison contraband because they found the drugs inside the county jail and my jaw hit the ground I couldn't believe it so I turn around and I'm walking as fast as I can out of the courtroom and I can hear God say you can follow me or you could continue down the wide road of destruction. Exactly. And I was like, man, you know what I mean? And I kind of, I started to break. I started to break. And when they called my name to release me, I called my little brother because we lived in the same apartments. We were living in Las Montañas at that time. I was on the third floor. He was right across the street on the first floor. And uh, he came, picked me up, put me in his car because at this time I was... I couldn't move. Wow. He put me in his car and he drove to my apartment and he helped me up the three flights of stairs and I went to wow. my house. And uh, I remember, I'm going to be honest, I remember telling my brother, because the, the police, they seized everything, you know. They took all the drugs I had on me. I asked my brother to look in the safe and he found some heroin in there and I smoked some heroin, the rest of what I had. And I was like, that's it, I told him, you know. And then my ex-girlfriend showed up that that next, well, not that next day. A couple hours later, she showed up. You know what I mean? She was smoking in heroin, but I was in and out of it because I didn't want to do it no more. I was done. You know, I was, I was so tired of using drugs. So Sunday came, and I heard a lighter in the kitchen, and I went out there, and I said, you got to go. I said, as long as you're here and as long as you're using, I'm never going to get clean, you know? Wow. And, and this is my girlfriend of since 2010, you know? And she's like, are you serious? I said, yeah, you got to go. I said, I don't want you here anymore. I said, I'm not living that life no more. And so she left, and I started going through the withdrawals. You know what I mean? I had two suboxone strips, I think, at home, and I Man. took those suboxone strips, and um, but they didn't help any. I was already, I was already into it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I remember I started going through the Malias. I started going through the Malias, and it was, it was something terrible. Like I've never. It took me 17 days oh, to kick man. cold turkey from the crystal meth and the heroin in my apartment. Wow. You know, oh. um, I remember my brother would come home every day. And I always knew when he was coming because he got off of work at 4, and he'd be there by 4.20, 4.30. But I remember I knew when it was on 3.30 because the ice cream man came through like clockwork at 3.30. Yep. And I was like, my brother's about to come check on me. And sure enough, he'd come. He had the key to the apartment. He'd come in and check to see if I was still alive and still doing okay. Wow. And, and I was like, man, I was, I was, I was pulling through. And then um, I remember telling my brother it was a Friday night. It was the day before the playoff game against the Saints for the Dallas Cowboys. And I told, I told my brother, I said, brother, I can't, I can't wait till Sunday church so I can run up to the altar and give my life back to Christ. Wow. And I was already going through the Malias. It was already like a week into it, you know. And I was just sick, having knee, couldn't sleep, couldn't do anything. And um, so Saturday, my tío had a cookout. We went over to his house to watch the Dallas Cowboy game. And, and my family's looking at me like I'm crazy because I haven't eaten in a week. I'm going through the Malias. I'm sweating, you know. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, I was so skinny at that time. My throat was hitting the back of my neck, wow. you know. And, and it was really, really bad, you know. And um, so... My brother, I told my brother, I said, take me out of here, you know what I mean, before there's any trouble. So he took me back to his house, and I was watching Dallas Cowboy game in his apartment. And I was sitting on the couch, and all of a sudden, I just started praising the Lord. Wow. I started worshiping his name, and, and I just felt his presence enter that apartment that day. Wow, man. And, and I remember God telling me, he said, son, you said you can't wait until Sunday to come to me. He's like, I can't wait until Sunday. I'm coming to you now. Wow. Amen. That's and, beautiful. And, I, and my brother came home and he, he had a smile from ear to ear because he'd been praying for me. I didn't know he had been praying for me for a couple of years already. And, and my life hasn't been the same since then. Praise God, um, man. And I, I still had to go through this case with the probation, with um, the new case I had. I still had this lower sciatic nerve and I couldn't walk in. And the following week, I remember... Uh, it was a Tuesday night. I was sitting on my bed, and I started going back to the chiropractor, but he didn't want to adjust my back because he was afraid something would happen down there. Uh-huh. And um, when I was a child, my mom put worship music on for me to help me sleep, so I continue to do that to this day. And I remember having the worship music on, and I couldn't sleep because I was still going through the Malias. And I, I woke up, I, I sat up, and I, I was cross-legged on my bed, and all of a sudden I just felt a hand push me in the middle of my back, push me down, and something grabbed both of my arms and yanked my arms straight up, and my back just adjusted perfect. 
Wow. Really? It yeah, it was amazing. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. That just happened. You know what I mean? I was like, man, I started instantly feeling better. I woke up the next morning and I walked to the kitchen. I opened up the refrigerator and I remember God telling me, son, I want you to praise my name every time you feel pain. What a miracle. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I want you to praise my name out loud every time you feel pain. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look crazy, you know? <laughs> and, you know what I mean? And he told me a third time. So I started doing it. I started praising his name through the pain. Every time I'll take a step, I'll say, Lord, I praise you for this pain. Do you know that's biblical? Yeah. Yep. I said to rejoice even when you go through trials and yeah. tribulations Matthew, and stuff. Matthew, right? Yeah. Yes. Matthew. Yeah. Man. And, and I started, so I started worshiping. I was like, Lord, I just praise you for this pain. I praise you for this pain. I yes. praise you for this pain. And, and so they thought I was going to have to have surgery. And so the chiropractor sent me to a surgeon. And the surgeon looked at me over. And he was like, I don't know what you did, but you're healed. This is a miracle. He said, you don't need surgery. You can go back to work. That's proof right there yeah. that God... In his sovereignty, yeah. healed you. Yeah. Because yeah, you belong to him. Yeah. Amen. Because when your heart changed, yeah. he healed you. Amen. Wow, brother. And I remember February of 2019, I was going through this case and I had a, a public defender. And he's like, You're going back to prison. You're going back to prison. I said, No, I'm not. I'm not going back to prison. I know I'm not going back to prison. I started claiming it. And I remember I was getting in the shower one afternoon and I had one foot in the tub, one foot out the tub. And I could hear God say, Son, you're not going back to prison. And I was like, so I, I grabbed onto that word, I held onto that word, and I fought and I contended with that word, you know? Yeah. And so I was going through the, through the whole motions of the court, you know what I mean? I fired my public defender, I got an outside attorney, and I went to go see him one day, and he's like, they got you. Wow. He's like, you're going back to prison. What, what year is this? It's 2019. This is 2019. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. going, I just right after I got arrested. And he's like, you're going back to prison. And I was like, no, I'm not. And he's like, well, I don't know what you expect to happen, a miracle? And I said, I believe in the unbelievable, I told him. And he looked at me and he just like shook his head. But at this time, you know, I was I started going to church. You know what I mean? I started going to church. I was there on Wednesdays. I was there on Sundays. I was serving. Um, we had Celebrate Recovery on Fridays. Praise I was God. out Celebrate Recovery on Fridays. Uh, I was I go to Zion City at this time. You know, every uh, third Saturday, we go and to different locations and pass out food boxes. So I'd show up on the Friday before, prepare all the food boxes. And then I had, wow. they had a thing called the Bethlehem House. So the first, second, and fourth Saturday, I would show up to the church and we'd pass out food boxes to anybody who needed. I was in church four days a week. Look who changed. Week. You yeah. changed. You went from doing the enemy's work to yes. doing God's yes. work when, yes. he, when he called you. Yeah. So you can see a new person right now. Yeah. And, I, and that's, that's what I did. You know, I was like, you know, I figured if I gave the devil everything I had, you know, I might as well give God everything I Absolutely. had. Absolutely. You know, I, and that's what I started doing. I was we like, have a choice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that choice, and I made that choice, and that's what I started doing. And so the DA was like, nope. She kept telling my lawyer, we're, we're, you're going back to prison, you're going back to prison, you're going back to prison. So we, we went for a settlement conference, and it was me, the DA, uh, another judge, and Brother Hyman. He went to the court with me that day. And the DA stands up, and she goes, you know what? Mr. Mendoza has had every opportunity to change. He hasn't changed. He's a menace to society. He uh, got in trouble for his son got a hold of some cocaine, you know, and he just doesn't want to change. He doesn't want to change. She goes, he's going back to prison. So the judge looks at me and the judge goes, you're going to have to convince the, the, your judge to give you the mitigated circumstances. He goes, what have you been doing? So I started to explain to him how Tuesday we go downtown and we pray for people and we pass out food, how I'm serving in the church and everything. I just started explaining to him. And he's like, wow. And Jaime, Brother Jaime is in the background. He's jumping up and down. He wants to speak. He's like, you know, jumping up and down. So the judge looks at him. He's like, would you like to say something? He goes, you know, I've seen Mr. Mendoza change because Brother Jaime was there at church when when I was kicking, when I was going to the Malias. I was still going to church when I was sick. You know what I mean? Shaking it. And Brother Jaime, he saw me then. You know what I mean? And me and Jaime know each other from the past. And so he's like, I've seen him change you know he's really militant in what he does he goes what do you have to lose he goes what do you guys have to lose roll the dice if mr mendoza messes up lock him up for 100 years you know and so the judge looks at the da and he goes you need to go home and think about this because people change yes you know she went home and thought about it two weeks later i signed a probation available plea that's amazing yeah yeah. she's probably looking at you like man i don't even recognize this dude no more yeah and then i was in court about a month later and i went in and the judge looks at me and she goes mr mendoza I have read the super substantial mitigated packet that your lawyer has given me. It is amazing how you have changed your life around. Yes, praise she God. goes, I am going to give you standard probation because you already live a real structured life. Structured life. She goes, I'm going to give you four years instead of seven. And you know that was wow. the spirit of God talking through her yeah. because yeah. she was touched by knowing that obviously she must be a woman of God too yeah. because she was listening to the man of God yeah. and she believed you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like funny. That. 
Yeah. It was funny because Brother Jaime, you know how you got to go through one set of doors and you got to go through another set of doors to get inside the courtroom? Yeah. Or Brother Jaime was behind the first set of doors taking pictures of the moment. I was like, man, it was, it was pretty cool. You know, <laughs> wow. Did. Yeah, it was pretty cool, you know, because he had walked through the whole situation with me, the whole the whole process. He went to all my court dates and everything. He had walked through the whole process with me, you know. Wow. And, and that's why it's important to have relationships. Yes, you know, sir. With, yeah. with the body of Christ, with the other believers, you know, who are willing to, to walk side by side whenever you're going through something, you know. Uh, it's important to have that in your life. So I got put on probation, you know, and I got switched probation officers a couple of times, you know, and I did everything I was supposed to do on probation. I didn't catch no violations. And then they released me on probation two and a half years later. Amen. Praise God, man. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Another applause for you, yeah. bro. That's an incredible story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I was sitting here thinking while you were sharing that testimony, I was looking at scripture and I was seeing how the apostle Paul pretty much just like you were when you were living in your sin, and he was obviously sinning against the Lord too when he was just persecuting the church, that when he got called out, people recognized and saw the different person that yeah. he was, they saw the different person that yeah. you are. Yeah. yeah. So there are going to be a lot of people who was a part of that event that yeah. you were going through yeah. that are seeing that, you know what, God is real. Yeah. Because that's the only way that guy could have changed. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's what I said. Like, it's people have been doing what they're doing their whole life and nothing changes. Hmm. Why not give God a try? Yeah. Why not give him a try? Because I guarantee just one touch from God. One touch, just so. one moment in his presence will change everything for you. And you'll never be the same. You come to Christ and he transforms your life. Even going back to your own sin, you're going to be totally uncomfortable. Yep. You know, and, exactly. and, and that's because, and, and Christ loves you. It's like two things. I got a, I got a event I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to minister in, in Saturday. And, and God gave me something. He's like, the two things that everybody wants is to belong and to be loved. Mm. That's the two things everybody wants in their life yes. to belong and to be loved. You know, and what greater love to have than the love of Christ? Amen. He laid his life down for us. That's right. And what better family to belong to than the family of Christ? The Bible says, because when you come accept Jesus into your heart, you, he adopts you into his family. Exactly. You know what? I'll prove that biblically. Because yeah. remember when he was healing some people and there were a lot of people in there, his mom and brother knocked at the door and yeah. they told him, Jesus, yeah. your mother and your brother are outside. He said, Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Yeah. He said, My mother, my my brother are those that are part of the family yeah. you just now said yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly yeah. brother so guess what we're brothers yeah yeah that's you know right. well, yeah that's brothers it. in Christ you know amen uh, and, and that's and that's the beautiful thing about Christ it's like man it's, it's like he loves he loves you so much it's, it's kind of look at it like this for everyone who's a who's a parent who's listening to this right now who may be on the fence mm -hmm. or may not believe in Christ if I came to you right now and I asked you to sacrifice your child so that one person or so that mankind could live, could you do it? They would say no. Every single person would say no. Yep. But God said yes. yes. Mm -hmm. He said yes. Not only did God say yes, but his son, Jesus, said yes. In fact, he actually asked his father right before it started yeah. to happen yeah. was, please, if you could change your mind. Yeah, yeah. He said, you know what? No, let thy will be done. Yeah, thy will be done. So he was willing yeah. to just do exactly yeah. what you just now yeah. said. And, and that, that shows the, the, the vulnerability of Christ. Yeah but is willing to be obedient to what God wanted him. Even to when do. he was in his flesh, yes. he, had, yes. he could make choice. Yeah, that's exactly right. that choice, you know. Praise God, brother. Yeah. And that's why I love the choice that you made. Amen. And guess what? The devil's going to always try to tempt you, Yeah. but then you're going to be able to show who you really are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because he tries to tempt me every single day. Yeah, yeah. And we learn to deny our flesh yeah. Yeah. every true. single day. And that's the reason why it's called one day at a time. Yeah, yeah. Because no one's perfect. Yeah, no, no one is. And, and it's amazing, too, because of the way I, I the way growing up in the streets, you know what I mean? You're always on the defensive. You're right. always, if you disrespect me, I'm going to disrespect you. You you treat me this way, I'm going to treat you that way. Mm -hmm. And and God has really given me um, self-control in such a way to... I could look at situations or be in a certain situation and, and not react the way I used to react. In other words, what he's saying is, and it's biblical, that now you can even love your enemy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's it, it's very possible. Yes. It's possible. Yes. You know, it's, it's possible because all things are possible through Christ who strengthens. Wow. Preach it. You know? Come on, brother. It's, it's possible. And you'll be ministering uh, coming up on this weekend? Yes. Yeah, on, on Friday, I'll be at Victory Outreach. Okay. Um, they're having a youth event, and I'll be there ministering. That's I think it's, I believe it's from 7 to 9. And then Saturday, after the event, Event on Friday night, my wife and I are going to drive up to Chuco Town in El Paso, Texas, and I'll be ministering up there. That's Praise awesome. Yeah. How long have you been married now? Uh, we got married in February 5th of 2021. Oh, right. Yeah, he got that smile on his face. I see yeah. it. You see that? <laughs> I saw that. I wish we were recording this with video. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. She, she's, a, she's a good woman. She's, and and it's, it's funny because, like, for, for me, my ex-girlfriend and I, we were together, but we weren't together. Right. You know, we were together, but we weren't together. And so I've been single you know, just taking care of myself and being very selfish, you know, and, and after we got married, I was like, dude, I don't want to do this. 
You know what I mean? I, I'm going to be transparent. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be married. You know what I mean? It's all about me. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't, I don't want anybody in my space. I don't want this. I don't. This is not something that I want, you know? So I've had to learn that it's not about me. Um, I was talking to a brother the other day, and uh, he was kind of going through something. And I was like, I said, what are you going to do? I said, the Bible says that we're supposed to lay down our life for our wife. Guess like what? Christ laid down the life for the yep. church. You just took out the words yeah. that I was getting ready to yeah. share. Yeah. It says that just like Christ loved the church, yeah. a husband's supposed to give his life yeah. up for his, yeah. his own wife yeah. because and, you become one flesh. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's crazy. I was telling him this. I was like, you know what? Because Jesus didn't quit. Because he was like, man, I'm just going to give up. I said, Jesus never quit. Never. I said, did Jesus quit when he was getting whooped? Nope. No. Did Jesus quit when he was carrying that cross up that, that up the hill? Nope. I said, did Jesus quit when they nailed the uh, nails in his hands? Nope. Did, oh. did he quit when they stabbed him on the side? Nope. In fact, what did he say? No. Forgive them, yeah, Father. Yeah. For they don't know what yep. they do. Yep. I said, did Jesus quit when he died? Nope. I said, nope, because he came back from to life. Yes. I said, did Jesus quit after he ascended it to heaven? I said, no, because the Bible says he's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. For us. Mm-hmm. I said, Every day. Is, is Jesus going to quit just interceding for us? No, nope. because he's going to come back for us. Exactly. So if, if Jesus did all that and he's still doing all that for his bride, yes. which is us, how much are we supposed to do for our wife? Wow. That's real. Remember, I told you this morning, I went out for a jog, right? And I got so easily distracted. I started listening to like motivational stuff when I was running, right? And I just got this thought in my head. And it's weird because I saw a video on YouTube a while back where they were talking about how do you know when God's voice is talking to you? How do you know when he's speaking to you? And I just got this really genuine, loving voice that said, you know, look at how amazing your life is because of your wife. Your wife is such an amazing person. Wow. Like, you need to be investing in these things that you love and care about the most because the best things in life are free, right? But so easily, especially like in a marriage or with the family, it's so easy for us to take these things yeah. for granted. Yeah. So I'm thinking about my wife and the stress that she's under her work, dealing with the kids. You know, she she takes on the, the majority of that. Yeah. You know, and I kept thinking like, man, like I, I want to do something for her. I just felt it. And I heard God's voice saying like, invest in her more. Wake yeah. her up with you. Let's go, you know, let's do these jogs together. Yeah, let's yeah. do this stuff together. Mm, yeah. So I woke up this morning, you know, when I got home, had my wife's coffee ready. I was just like, it was just such a beautiful thing. And, and then Vance is always talking about, you know, how how amazing it is, like with that marriage thing. Yeah. Um, and then we're talking about a, a man who finds a wife finds a treasure. Yes. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's just, it's yeah. beautiful. And this is amazing on this art cast, the very thing that you talked about earlier before this was even set up. Oh, yeah. We're talking this about brother it. is talking about it out of his yeah. mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. And my wife, she's 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 such a selfless woman. It's amazing. Like God paired us up, you know, we're 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 perfect for each other. She's such a selfless woman That's and great. she just she just gives so much, you know. Yeah. And, and and she has a, a nine year old daughter. We have a nine year old daughter and an eight year old boy now. And it's amazing too because um the impact that I have on, on their lives, you know, like my oldest daughter, my daughter in Salma, you know, she when she gets upset or she doesn't get her way, you know, when we first got married, she would like She'd get upset and angry, and it would ruin her whole day. Mm. Like, it would ruin her whole day, you know? And, and once God began to teach me that I really to, need to learn how to control my emotions and my feelings and my anger and, and not treat anybody around me any way, shape, or form different. Right. Just because I'm feeling some type of way. Yep. You know what I mean? I've been able to start to implement that in her life. You know what I mean? And that's and biblical. Right. It says yeah. to raise them up in the yeah. way they should go. Yeah. And I'll let you finish yeah. it. Yeah. So, it and, and so they won't even depart. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I've been really teaching her. I'm like, like you know, um, when she gets in trouble, I've been like, I'll, whenever she gets in trouble, I'll sit her down and, and I'll correct her. You know what I mean? But I believe in, um, you can't have correction without instruction. Yeah. You yeah. know, so we'll sit down, we'll talk about what she did wrong. You know what I mean? And how she can go about doing things right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, she's really learning how to control her anger she came up to me yesterday she's like i'm doing better right mm, that's with, beautiful you know oh, with, with, yeah and i was like man yes you do absolutely well, you know it doesn't mean in the future they may not fall off but yeah. at least they know where to go back to yeah, yeah. And that's called christ yeah. and it's, it's breaking a generational curse yeah. i mean you're leading by that example through everything that you've experienced yeah. man all the pain all the trauma everything to be able to take that now yeah. and to actually see the love that you're putting into yeah. your babies yeah. like that's yeah ain't nothing greater than yeah. that it's cool. That's cool, man. Wow. Thank you, dude, so much. And you know what's crazy, too, is I, I was thinking he, this gentleman right here, he's involved in the hip-hop community, too. You make music, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, his team, his whole team, I know you guys have a name. What's the name of your team, all your brothers together? Uh, well, we got a, a men's group. Okay. Yeah, and it's called the Water Walkers 521. Water Walkers. Yeah. There you go. Water Walkers. They yeah. brought one of my favorite rappers in town. And, and it was like a free really? event. Yeah, Brian Trejo, who was also a gentleman who, if, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, he was on trial for murdering. He was getting ready. He, I think he tried to attempt the murder of the murder of his own brother, right? Oh, Some, I believe so. And uh, he told God, you know, if you get me off of this case, if, if you know, I will give my life to you. 
and he ended up getting off of the case, and Brian Trejo gave his life to God after yes. that. So, I mean, the Water Walkers, yeah. they brought him into town, and they had this huge event, and it was so special for me, bro, yes. and I want to let you know this. You can let the rest of them know. For me, it was very special. For one, getting closer to God, like, it's, it's fairly new to me, right? Yes. It's, it's something, like, actually getting closer to him and having that relationship with him has been something that's fairly new to me. Yeah. And hip-hop was such a huge part of my life. It would upset me as I got older because I couldn't bring my kids around whenever yeah. we did shows, yeah. whenever we toured. Yeah. I couldn't bring my kids around because of what hip-hop brought, the yeah. women, the drugs, yeah. the ugliness. That was yeah. me back in the day. You know, and, and, it, and it made me so sad. And this event that you guys put together was the first event that I was able to take my wife and my kids Amen. to. Amen. And I was proud of that Amen. because my kids were able to see him there, man. And it just I just felt God's presence Amen. there. Yeah. So thank you. Amen. And make sure Amen. you thank them for that, man. Yes. Thank that you so much. To me. I will. I will. You know? and, and, mu and music, is it's... It's like I was telling Salma because she wanted to go to a dance where they're practicing dancing and it was gonna be like this hip song, song hip hop song where uh -huh. they're they're shaking her booty and all that and 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 I told her she couldn't do it. Uh -huh. Thank you. you know I mean? She didn't understand why. She was kind of upset. No, she was actually really upset. You know, she was still talking about it a couple of days later, but she was processing her feelings and and talking about it and just you know, which is I, I encourage her to do is talk about your feelings that way we can get them out and open. We can learn how to deal with them. You know, and and I explained to her. I said I said. Because when me and my wife got first got married, she listened to country or like some soft music and stuff like that. And then someone come in, Daddy, mommy was listening to secular music. You know what I mean? And I said, <laughs> what's the difference if you coming in and telling on your mom because she's listening to secular music, but yet you want to go dance to a 90s song? I said, do you have any idea the type of music that was coming out in the 90s? You know, and she doesn't really know that. She doesn't really know. So I broke it down to her. I was like, she's like, well, 90s music was created or, or this music was created before Christian music. And I said, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I said, in the Bible, it says Lucifer was a, in charge of worship. Now, the first music that was ever created was to worship God with. Mm -hmm. Now, Lucifer got puffed up and, and proud and he came against God because of what music was doing to him. And then he's messed it all up, man. Music is just, just it will move a generation, which is it, it's doing now. Yeah. You know? And especially. So I, yeah, especially now. You know, so I broke it down to her and I was like, you know, we don't listen to that music. You know what I mean? Thank you for that, brother. Yeah. In, in my opinion, it's either you're either worshiping Christ or you're or the worshiping devil. the devil. That's it. There, the, the Bible says it's black and white. There, there ain't no right in the fence. There's no yeah. in between. There's no in between. That's right. Whatsoever. You know what I mean? And, and so I broke it down to her and I started telling her that. And, 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 and it's, it's amazing too with the music because um, I've had so many parents reach out to me talking about my, my child knows every single word to your song. Oh, and they'll send cool. me videos of them singing the song. And my daughter knows every single word to every song that I've put out. You know, she'll know every single word to the song before I even put it out because I'll be practicing. Practicing it, and I don't even know this till now, but I'm right there practicing the song so I can memorize it before I get into the studio. Mm. And she's right there practicing it along That's with cool. me, you know. That's and a I'm good like, feeling. Yeah, it's cool. cool. It's really cool that she, she's really into it like that. Well, hey, man, you got to leave us the links. We'll make sure to put them in the episode notes okay. and stuff. So if anyone wants to check yeah. them out, they can go check yeah. you out. Yeah. But yeah, man, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you coming through. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and sharing your testimony yeah. with us, Daniel, man. Like, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to see that transformation, you know, and, and uh, we're just very very grateful to have you man, man thank, thank you, you very so much, much. For, for having me i appreciate this god bless you man and god i sure appreciate you coming on man yeah, god bless you guys too. so blessed to be here with you today amen all right man ladies and gentlemen that was another episode of the rcast we thank you again if you guys have any questions you guys want to be a part of the rcast make sure you hit us up at the rcast 6944 at gmail.com that is t-h-e-a-r-c-a-s-t 6944 at gmail.com we hope you guys are having a beautiful day beautiful rest of your week much love and god bless you wherever you are amen amen What's going on, everybody? This is Buddha from the RCast, and I just wanted to thank you for checking out this week's episode. It means a lot, and if you could share it with a friend or a loved one, somebody you need in recovery, or maybe somebody who just needs that little bit of extra positivity in their life, we'd greatly appreciate it. If you would like to join us here on the RCast, either in the studio live or online, hit us up. The links are down in the show notes of this episode, and on there, you can find direct links to our main website here at America's Rehab Campus and all of our social media platforms. Follow us! 
We keep the pulse positive and motivational, focused on recovery, health, and wellness. As you know, in this modern day and age, we need as much love as possible, y'all. And as always, if you or somebody you know is in need of substance abuse treatment, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're open 24 hours a day, and our direct phone number is 1-833-272-7342. Once again, that phone number is 1-833-272-7342. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day. Much love and God bless. Peace.